everybody welcome back to my channel so today i have a few easy hairstyles to show you guys for short to medium hair i haven't done a hair tutorial in maybe over two years so i might be a little rusty at this i also have very recently had my hair cut a lot shorter stay away from bleach and heat styling kids because it's just not worth it so i'm going to be showing you some really cute and easy hairstyles for shorter to medium length hair i consider it to be fairly short like the back of it kind of rests above my shoulders the front obviously doesn't so it's short to medium there's going to be kind of like an everyday version and then a slightly bougie twist to each one so hopefully a lot of you can take inspiration from this and a lot of these hairstyles can obviously be done on long hair as well i just picked ones for this video that mainly work on short hair and kind of cater towards those little annoying bits that won't quite reach into a hairstyle so without rambling anymore i'm gonna get on with it and we're gonna sort this out because this is freshly washed hair from last night and i need to deal with it Okay, for my first hairstyle, I'm going to be showing you a slick back bun. So we're gonna be going from this to something very, very, very sleek. This is gonna involve heat styling, not all of these wheels, so the first thing you're gonna need is a heat protectant if you wanna do this one. This is the Tresemme Heat Defense Spray. I've been using this for years and years and years. It's like one of their longest running products, I swear. So I'm just spraying that quite generously through the lengths of my hair, kind of avoiding the root, but I move my hair about a lot to make sure the underneath layers get a little spray and then i'm just going to brush that through and the brush that i'm using today is a tangle teaser wet styler but i use this one in my hair as well dry because it's just the best if you have quite knotty hair this is amazing and backstory on my hair i have obviously as you can see it's quite like wavy when i first wash it it's very like soft and uh kind of shiny ish I mean, the color doesn't lend itself to being particularly shiny, but it's got that very soft kind of shiny feel. But as time goes on, it becomes very coarse, very knotty, that kind of typical like wavy, frizzy hair. And because of that, it actually holds a style really well. So I don't use a ton of mousses or anything like that. If your hair is straighter, when it comes to the hairstyles that we're using, a bit more heat on to create curls, then definitely use some kind of like curl holding mousse. And if your hair is outrageously curly for the more sleek styles, you can use a few more products if you want, but I'm very used to doing my own type of hair and lots of my friends have a similar type of hair as well. So make sure that you kind of tailor products to what is best for you. So now that my hair is brushed, what I'm gonna do is divide my hair into sections and just very gently straighten all of it i'm not going to be too meticulous with it because we're straight bunning it so it's not entirely necessary but basically the kind of top half needs to look very very sleek otherwise you're going to get some waves showing even when the hair is pulled back and it's just going to kind of undo the neatness of this hairstyle and straighten my hair i'm going to be using the ghd platinum styler plus i really like these because they have a curved edge to the outside of the straightener and that makes it so that when you're curling hair you get a really beautiful even curl and the outside kind of heats up a little bit as well so it almost works like a curling wand and i'm just using my hands to help straighten my hair but you can use a brush if you want so now i've done the underside i've taken the top of my hair down i'm just giving it a quick brush through and then using my tangle teaser brush to help me straighten the front bits so as you can see i now have some very very straight hair i'm gonna use this comb pointy ended comb to sort out my parting line because this is way off and for a slick back bun i like for my parting to be very very centered and very straight it just makes it look very clean and modern and i really really love that look you will also notice that i have much shorter bits around the front of my hair they don't fit into the ponytail so i'm going to be showing you how i get them to kind of like stay there we go that's the straightest my parting is going to get the day after hair wash day quite frankly this is a hairstyle that i love to do when my hair is a little bit dirtier it means i can put more product on it and not really worry about the days following because most likely i'm going to wash my hair very very soon so yeah it's definitely a hairstyle that lends itself more to the greasy hair days which is um one of the most annoying things about me doing this is the first look so i'm going to tell you lots of the products that i would use but not necessarily use all of them because i've got a few more hairstyles to get through and i don't want to mess them up because i've got a ton of my product in my hair anyway so now that i've got my parting i have left the back the back is a little bit unruly again first day hair all of that so what i like to do with that is just brush all of that kind of backwards and down and just get it kind of moving in that direction because that's the direction we want it to go in anyway because we're pulling it into a ponytail and then i also use my brush to bring all of that hair round behind my ears not too low i actually kind of like my bun to be a little bit higher i like it to be in line with like my jaw line almost i find it just kind of like tucks you in a bit i don't know it feels like a little mini facelift so round about here so below where my hairline finishes at the back. And you can pin this if you want. I'm just quite used to doing this freehand. I say that, I'll probably botch this, but there we go. So just 
just try and use my one hand to scoop everything and then I do the same with the underneath, pulling that up and into where my hand is sitting. And then I just smooth out any bumps. This is so hard to do in a viewfinder, but hopefully you get the gist. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a very sleek looking ponytail. There are some flyaways, maybe a couple of little bumps. If you have any bumps that are really bugging you, I would use a smaller comb like this one that we were using earlier and just use that to kind of tease them out take your time with this this always looks like a really low effort hairstyle but actually you need to give a little bit more care and attention to it than it maybe it looks like so i'm actually going to show you how you can make this a bun or a ponytail because i would use different hair bands depending on what i'm using for this style but for the ponytail i would just use either a silk scrunchie i love these or a simple hair elastic the silk scrunchies are better for your hair if you have broken hair bleached hair or just want to be kinder to your hair they're much much softer but you still get the same level of tightness these are a little bit more discreet and i find sometimes with a slick back pony they're just the better option especially if you want to wrap a little bit of hair around um, the base of your ponytail i'm going to show you the latter today because i think that's quite cute and i've got just about enough hair to manage doing that throwing caution to the wind and risking breaking more of my hair so that is secured it's nice and tight next what i'm going to do is sort out these little front bits fortunately because i sit my ponytail slightly higher up on my head the top layers around my crown actually do just about fit in to this ponytail but any lower and i'd be needing to pin kind of the whole way around so to hide the hair tie on the back of my hair and just have this look a little bit neater what i'm going to do is take a piece of hair from underneath the ponytail and just wrap it around the hairband and secure it with a little blonde bobby pin these are from boots i find it's just best to find the one that matches your hair color the best blonde probably doesn't i probably need to switch back to brown soon but will work with it. So that is the back of my ponytail and what I also like to do around the front of my hair is just take a couple of blonde bobby pins and just push them through my hair. They're kind of hidden behind my ears and I just find that that holds my front pieces of hair in place the best, especially this one. This is a nightmare. And then just make sure that bobby pin hasn't disturbed the rest of the hair and then to finish up i would use a few different products depending on the look i was going for for a very glossy sleek hair look i would go for the igk high shine top coat this is basically like a shine serum cream type thing and what you can do to get rid of any like little leftover niggly bumps you can kind of use this and then a comb like a very fine tooth comb to kind of comb your crown out because it is always the crown that is a bit of a pain in the bum if you want to hold down the hair but you don't want to go for a super super shiny look then a gel would probably be better i like to use the igk rich kid coconut oil gel because it's really really hydrating on the hair it gives a nice little bit of shine but not too much and then it holds flyaways really really well so i would use that kind of over the top part of the hair and then hairspray around the back of the ponytail just to make sure this little loop of hair isn't moving so now I'm taking those pins out and I'm going to show you how I would style this with a scrunchie and a little bun. So the bun you can do with your hair kind of depends on how long it is. You can either twist your hair whilst holding the ponytail kind of in place and twist it into a tiny knot like this. Wrap the tail end of your hair around and then secure with a hairband. So you have this tiny little bun or you can do a classic rollover bun which i think is just like everyone's go-to at the moment so just tie your hair as if you were doing a ponytail and then when you come to secure the last loop of the hairband don't pull the hair all of the way through so those are our slick back looks done next i'm going to be doing a look which i'm really excited to do and i actually haven't done before at all this was very highly requested from you guys after a lovely ghd hairdresser did my hair back before christmas and i actually didn't do that to my hair but i do kind of have a vague gist on how to do it so i thought i would show you in this tutorial how you can do it on yourself how you can fix any mistakes because i probably will mess this up along the way and yeah just the general gist of how to do it so for the look my hair was straight Straight, but not as slick back straight as we just had it was also a lot longer but i did have a lot more shorter bits so hopefully this will reassure some of you with more like short layers that you can still pull off this hairstyle we just used a lot more hairspray to secure the look in place but that was basically all that we did and kind of pulled it out and made it a bit more messy but there was a lot of hairspray in my hair but what i'm going to start off by doing is picking the pieces that i want out of the hairstyle first and then i'm going to work from there i'm going to be quite messy about this because we kind of did it in more of a boho 
style however this can definitely be done as part of the slip back look and is definitely something that i plan on doing you can mix and match different parts of these uh hairstyles with each other if that makes sense so i've just taken two bits from the top of my hair very like noughties vibe and then i'm also taking the sideburns that i have above my ears which i actually love most people don't love this bit of their hair but i really like these and i'm leaving those out you could also keep the top bits in and leave these out i think that would also look really really cute i'm going to leave these out just so i can show you styling for the front bits of your hair and you've already seen me do the slip back look so you don't need to see that yet and again i'm just pulling the rest of the hair back i'm doing it in a more messy style than i did with the last look and then i'm just going to secure it with a hopefully black thin hairband i might not find a black one though so we may be working with like a dark brown okay so i have a slightly thicker black hairband than i would ideally like but i'm gonna go with black because of the accessories part of this look if you don't want to do the accessories part of this look then i would go for a thin band that matches your hair color like in the look before and do the wrapping your kind of underside of the ponytail around the hairband just to neaten the look up you can make it a little bit messier or braid that little section if you want just to give this a bit more of a like boho look so i'm just going to secure the hairband nice and tight but just leave a tiny bit of room just for something to be tucked in now that that's done i'm just going to pull a few little bits out and just loosen it a bit more this will give some height to your crown area and when it comes to styling my front pieces of hair it will just work quite nicely together as you can probably see i've got a few little bits that are kind of poking out around the sides so what i like to do is use a hairspray it doesn't have to be super heavy hold but depending on how unruly your hair is kind of alter that to you but i'm going to be using the way soft hairspray just to tame those little bits around the side of my head next i'm going to style the front bits of my hair i'm just going to do a slightly loose wave to them just to give them a little bit of shape and kind of pull them away from my face and just kind of help to frame it a little bit more so they kind of sit like this so what i'm going to do is start almost like just above where my eyebrows are that's where i just start the motion but it's not where the curl is actually going to be because i'm going to move down and twist as i go so you're kind of like twisting the straightener at slightly diagonal angle away from you like this so just lightly clamp down just ever so lightly and then move it away from the face just rolling it and then i'm gonna pull this because i don't want this to be a very ringletty curl and i'm just gonna keep pulling that until the hair goes cold basically whatever you do to it when it's hot is how it will set so if you want your hair to stay very very curly hold it in a ringlet if you want it to be a little bit more of a like fallen out curl then keep it straight here we go we have a little ringlet framing my face and i'm also gonna do similar with this little bit of hair here you don't have to do anything too much at all especially when your hair is shorter because your hair is lighter there is less gravity weighing it down because there's nothing to really weigh down so your hair is going to curl much easier if you want to use a curler versus a straightener i would recommend turning the heat right down on it just to give yourself a little bit more flexibility in how your curl looks and sets it's also better for your hair and then i'm going to do exactly the same on the other side and to finish that off i just kind of push my parting a little bit more forward you can hairspray this as well if you want lots of girls pinch these two bits kind of together hairspray it my hair is very malleable so um i don't always need to do that i might need to do it with this side though because you're not behaving no it's gonna be fine and the thing i love about this look is if you have baby hairs which i feel like so many of us do um especially me mine are very dark this look is kind of like quite soft and pretty and you can kind of get away with the baby hairs being out so that's the main part of our style done it's very very cute very pretty and it's something that i feel like most of us can do regardless of our hair length even if you've got like a chin length bob you can still get some cute little bits like this and just use a little bit more hairspray and a few more bobby pins to secure the look and from here you could do so many things with your little ponytail depending on your hair length you could go for braids you could go for a bun like a nice little messy bun and kind of pin it all in i'm actually going to be using some ribbon i didn't buy this ribbon um i actually couldn't find the ribbon that was originally used on my hair when we did this style <laughs> however i just found an old bit of underwear that i didn't like anymore and <laughs> just cut the ribbon off of it so what you can do is either tuck this into the hairband and kind of wrap around your ponytail and then kind of secure at the base and then hide the tail or you can tie a knot around your ponytail if you feel like you want it to be more secure and to secure at the back you can either tie it in a knot or take a bobby pin that is the same color as the ribbon or your hair whichever one and just slide it purely over the ribbon from the bottom up so that you're literally just fastening all of the end of the ribbon together and it should stay pretty well 
So yeah, that is it for this hairstyle. It's probably my favorite of the entire video and you can kind of play about with it as much as you want. When I had it done previously and my hair was much longer, um, we had quite a lot of ribbon, but obviously couldn't get this far down with it because my hair was much thicker. So you can just do like a small base and that's obviously a more wearable way to do this look. You'd also leave the front bits kind of less curly if you wanted to, um, leave less of it out. Like I said, I would love to have kind of like the front bits pinned back and just like my little sideburns poking out and then that ribbon. I might do that for the rest of today once I'm done with this video. That would look really cute. So next I'm going to show you a cute way to do a top knot without having loads of annoying short pointy sticky out bits on the top of your head. But well, let's hope anyway. I'm really sad taking this out. I'm going to have to do it again. So for this next look, disclaimer, I am popping in a couple of little um, short clipping extensions from Hair Rehab. I, lots of you will know if you watch my videos already, I use these because of the very short kind of broken layers at the front of my hair. It helps to thicken it up if I want to have like a nice sleek bob or even for curls, it just gives a little bit more volume, but it can also be used for an updo. So what I've done is just pulled the back of my hair back, put two little rows of two clipping extensions so one here one here clip those down and then i've left a little bit of hair at the front to cover it so then i'm just scraping all of that backwards and i'm going to leave it quite messy because we've got these nice wavy bits at the front sometimes i think if you've got waves it's nice to have a messier do rather than have the rest of your hair looking super super sleek so i'm going to pull that up to the top of my head and as you can see those extensions have just given us a nice little bit of kind of extra length but extra thickness as well to work with which is going to help when i want to twist my hair round because i have so many layers that i just end up with lots of spiky bits all over the place it's very annoying but what i also suffer with when tying my hair up is these little bits at the back that just fall out throughout the day and you end up just looking like an absolute mad woman with like bits of your hair falling out it's like in star wars when they just have that one random bit of hair that's like yeah, you either have to braid it like they do and accept to move on, or I've got another option, which is far cuter. So now I've got all my hair on the top of my head. I'm gonna go for a messy bun, I think, rather than a ballerina bun. You could do either, depending on what your hair is kind of up to. If you've got lots of short layers like me, sometimes a messy bun I think is better because you can't you can kind of hide the fact that you've got lots of these little bits and kind of play with them a bit more. Whereas if you've got hair that's all one length, you can go for a nice big ballerina bun. The world's your oyster, basically. But now that I've got my hair on top of my head like this, I've got my finger and thumb securing the base of the hair. And then I'm gonna take these spare fingers here and I'm taking my ponytail from behind, flipping it over my index finger, which is securing my hair. And then using my hand to hold that down and then I'm going to bring this back up again and then use my thumb at the back to hold that bit of the bun down. So as you can see, we now have like this little twist. And then I'm going to use my hairband. This is just a thin elastic. And as you can see, bits do start to fall out, but we're just going to secure around the base. And it looks crazy, but we're going to work with it and tweak it and pin bits down and it will look really cute. And, uh, the crazy bit of hair has already emerged. I went for a super high bun today just so I could really exaggerate how bad that is and how annoying it is. Short hair girls, I feel you. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my crazy bun and I'm just gonna pull bits down, place them on top of my head and then secure the bun down to my already kind of existing hair so that it sits nicer. And I'm gonna do that with all of these crazy little bits as well. With this tiny bit here, I'm gonna take this around the back and pin it just so I kind of feel like I have a little bit more going on at the back because I think sometimes you pin everything down to the front and it looks really cute from the front and then from the back you see it and you're like and the main premise of this is I take these loops most of these I take those and secure the bottom of them down to my own hair so I know I've probably got a really weird back to this bun so I'm going to take this bit at the side and its little spiky friend and then another bit that's kind of loose at the back. So I'm holding those using my index finger and thumb and then using my other hand to secure. And this bit of hair is being quite unruly so I'm gonna secure from both sides. I've also got an annoying little bit of hair at the back here. What I'm gonna do is actually twist that forward. So 
but you can see it a little bit here we're going to take advantage of the fact that I have loads of short little spiky bits poking out and kind of make a thing out of it rather than trying to hide it and make this look super perfect this is why I left the front bits of my hair down it all just kind of works nicely together if you play about with the fact that it's meant to be messy also with any leftover flyaways you could use a strong hold hairspray to secure them all I'm not going to bother doing that today because I'm about to take this straight back out but with just these little fluffy bits on the top I would just take a hairspray and spray it over and then smooth those right down as for the back of the hair which is the bane of every short to medium length hair girl's life we're going to use a very instagrammy technique to sort this out so i've got lots of these little hair pins which uh, i got from asos i am or oh, actually some of these might have been from zara these were definitely from asos i've got girl boss which is a phrase i hate but i liked the boss so uh most of the time i would just use that because i like it but i am the queen of unnecessary hair accessories so i thought i'd make use of them in this video and we're gonna go for just like a very instagrammy little look to the back of the bun which is both cute and also very practical because it's gonna sort this little bit out and stop any more from falling down so that is the finished back to our bun i think it is so so cute like i absolutely love it i don't know how i don't wear this more to be honest and depending on your situation how comfortable you feel with having this many very noticeable hair clips on the back of your head you can just use one hair clip one of my friends actually uses like a big silver hair clip to do one on the back of her hair to keep her bun up and i just think it's such a cute look so you could go for one statement one you can go for bobby pins if you just want a really simple look and a really everyday one and especially if you've got bobby pins that match your hair perfectly but for those of you who kind of want to make a feature out of the fact that you have to put so many freaking bobby pins at the back of your head this is a go-to i love it i also have a very very big pearl clip as well which i could introduce into this mix but i kind of wanted to keep it with loads of little kind of small ones yeah i hope you guys like this i really love this i love how it came out and it's actually very quick and easy to do once you've got the hang of that initial bun which i feel like most people can kind of get to grips with you can't really make any mistakes because you're just pinning a load of hair down using bobby pins the only downside to this hairstyle is obviously taking it out at the end of the day it's going to be an absolute ball ache and one that i have to do right now okay so for the next hairstyle i'm actually going to be curling my hair the full head now and i'm also going to be doing a little hair flip so you can make this as neat or as messy as you want i'm going to kind of go somewhere in between the two i'm going to use my pointy comb to just draft out some kind of parting there will always be like a little bit of uh, volume on this side because my hair is not used to going this way i normally have a middle parting and like a slick back or straight hair kind of style but this kind of flip is really nice it also makes your hair look a little bit longer as well because it just kind of gives it a little bit more height and stuff also the back of my hair never really likes doing anything apart from going backwards so i'm just going to leave that to do its own thing but now that i've got my general parting kind of mapped out i just kind of roll with the baby hairs because they're just there doing their own thing i'm actually going to add a little bit more volume to this side just because there is a lot of layering going on and i want it to be a little bit thicker so i'm going to take my two little sets of extensions when i have my hair in a middle parting i wear these either side and it just kind of helps to give a little bit more volume and makes everything look very clean and modern to be honest i might just need the one today you could also do them around the back if you wanted to i'm not going to worry too much and the back of my hair is like so ridiculously thick so i map out basically where the hair needs to finish and just clip it underneath part of my hair like that might bring it up ever so slightly so i'm going to pop it in round about where i think this is where i would normally clip it it's hard to tell when you've um moved your parting i've also actually realized that i can probably fit my extensions in on the other side as well so i'm going to give that a go yeah perfect and it looks a bit crazy at the moment because my hair is a little bit flicky from the layers but that's all going to be resolved once we start curling it so for this you can either use a curler for me i'm going to use my ghd straighteners the platinum plus ones these are the best for curling and i'm very very comfortable using them but use whatever you think is best for shorter hair i would go for a smaller barrel excuse me i would go for a smaller barrel like a very very thin wand just so you can actually like get your hair kind of wrapped around it at least once with a larger barrel you're gonna just about get your hair round it which um if you actually want at least one kind of full wave not the best but if you do prefer just a very loose wave then you can use a larger barrel so i'm going to start by pulling the top part of my hair up much like i did when we straightened it i just tie the little bun at the back and leave the short bits sticking up just so they don't interfere with the curls when curling my hair i don't work with a brush i just tend to work using my hands 
and as you can see I just use the same twisting motion I did to do the front sections of my hair so lightly clamping down and twisting in a clockwise motion so I'm rolling the straightener towards myself and then I'm just going to pull this out a little bit so with this technique we're going for quite a loose beachy wave it's going to be a little bit more pulled together to begin with it always does look that way but as time goes on the curls will drop if you are using a wand you can actually create a more beachy look by kind of moving the wand whilst the hair is wrapped around it it kind of gives it a bit more of a beachy feel and doesn't make the curls as precise and i love that look i did that on victoria from in the fro for her hen do i'll pop a little picture here but it's basically winding the hair around the wand and then moving it like that probably terrible for your hair if you did it every day but on the odd occasion it achieved such a gorgeous beachy look and what i do try and do as well when going for a beachy wave is just do a half twist and then kind of leave the end and i find that just gives much more of a like beachy kind of like effortless look if you go all the way to the end when you're doing your curls they're gonna look very very done which is so easy to do when you've got shorter hair because you don't have as much hair to play with and for the back sections a little tip for curling your hair i always roll my straighteners outwards so the curls kind of going away from my head pull down a tiny bit and then leave the back and you're left with something a little bit like that and i just kind of I've got a feel for that now and I tend not to worry about what the back looks like too much because I'm not seeing it. So that's our first kind of layer of beachy waves. You can use a uh, hairspray to secure it if you need a bit more hold. Um, curling mousse would also be great to have used before doing this if you wanted to hold a little bit longer. I also like to use a texturizing spray. This is the IGK Beach Club. They also have a dirty spray for if your hair is that very, very clean texture. My friend Brooke, who I will show a photo of her curled hair that I've done here, she has very, very thick, very kind of straight hair and to keep her curls held a little bit better and to give them more of a beachy texture i used both beach club and the dirty spray together and it worked so so well and it really helped hold the curls and then just kind of give them a bit of a break up and then what you can also do is give the roots a little back comb because we are going to hide those under a lot more hair so just kind of gives the hair that's going to sit above it a bit more volume and then i also just like to do the ends of my hair as well just really adds to that beachy look and it can look quite crazy to begin with but it's all going to fall out a little bit more throughout the day but this is a great last step after texturizing and this back combing will hold slightly better if you've already texturized and sprayed and kind of everything a little hack as well if you don't want to go out and buy a texturizing spray but you have dry shampoo it works in a kind of similar way if you spray dry shampoo through the length so that's a little tip if you don't want to go out and buy a new product now for the upper layers of my hair i always curl away from my face when i'm doing the front pieces but then throughout the rest of my head i tend to alternate the direction in which i curl this just helps to give it a little bit more of a messy look and make it all look less uniform if you wanted like really really glam waves then i would say do all of the curls at the same point in the exact same direction but for a beachy wave we want to alternate and so with this one like i said i'm going away from my face and then twist that and then twist that and then twist that that way I'm going to break all this up in a minute but it just really helps to hold that curl and get it set in that position so this side is now done and as with the under layers i'm also going to use texturizing spray on it i also did a bit of the back whilst i was doing this side i kind of do it in two halves so that side at the back is already done and needs spraying as well and then as with the curls before i'm going to break them up just kind of rough them up a bit make it a bit messy all things out and especially at the bottom i like to brush those bits out and then i'm also gonna really roughly back home just to give some more volume and it kind of breaks the curls up a little bit it's basically like the messy version of brushing curls out but without taking away any texture so that is one side done i'm going to do the other side now i tend to do this in two sections because the hair is obviously a lot more thick and if you're worried about the hair extensions pulling your actual hair what i always do is just hold my hand at the top of the extension just because um it gives you a lot more support and it will stop you pulling on your actual hair and like i said before tweak this to your own preferences if you want this to be a bit neater then definitely go for a slightly different technique lose the back combing lose texturizing spray 
or just do all of the hair in one direction that would definitely help to make it look a little bit more neat and uniform and a little bit more glam now with this top part of my hair i actually don't tend to curl it in the same way that i do the rest of my hair i keep the curls a lot looser because you're not going to want ginormous <laughs> crazy curls kind of sitting on this part of your head and especially with shorter hair your hair length is a, a lot shorter unless you have all one length hair like victoria from Winthrop she has very very thick hair so when i did this style on her i kind of start the curls roughly from about here and kind of go the whole way through because her hair is very long in terms of like there's not much layering at all and it's heavy so that's going to weigh it down more whereas with my hair i have lots of light layers so the curls are going to hold more they're going to be a lot more intense so we just want to be a lot more gentle when we're working with short bits of hair like this because they don't even really reach around to where the curls start on this side so we just want to give them a little bit of movement if anything at all so i'm just literally just a little half twist and we'll comb that out as well and then i also get to a point where i want to make a decision about where my fringe is what is what constitutes my fringe and what i want to do with it so i generally tend to take the leftover which is actually quite a thick section because i have a lot of like fringiness just because of my shorter layers and i'm going to start from some you can see my curl starts from around about my eyebrow point on this side so i'm going to kind of try and get it to match on the other side so i'm going to start about here and just really gently twist away from my face just really really gently so you can see that's barely even a curl at all it's just a slight wave it's almost like a curve and now that that's all done texturizing spray Ugh, let's hope this doesn't go on my camera lens i'm just gonna mess that all up again if there's any curls that i'm not the biggest fan of after i do always try and tweak them so this one i'm just like slowly rolling the straightener over this is actually not even my real hair so i can go over it a little bit more but i just kind of roll the straightener over it and try and get it into more of a shape that i'm happy with so that is my little beachy wave long bob hairstyle using a couple of extensions if you've got thick enough hair you can probably get away with using no extensions at all my hair is just obviously in need of a little bit more length at the bottom to kind of give it that clean neat look it just helps give it a lot more volume as well and i love that very cute i haven't done a hairstyle like this in a very very long time but lots of you who have been around for a while will definitely remember a hair like this on me if you saw in the froze hendu vlog and you wanted to know how she got that hair this is how so yeah, next I'm going to be showing you how you can glam this up for a night out or just add a little bit of something extra if you're feeling a bit extra. So I'm going to take my first hair grip. I have a set of silver hair grips. They're all kind of like slightly assorted. There's a mix. Some of them are the same and then some of them are from different sets, but they're all silver. So I've just picked kind of the same colour palette. If you wanted, you could go for silver and gold, but in the same style, just really mix it up depending on what you have, what is available to you. I'm actually going to leave a tiny bit of like sideburn there i think rather than pulling this all that's too much no 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 so i'm gonna scoop all of this back and just start sliding hair slides in something like that I've got another one that's slightly bigger I'm just gonna slide that one in underneath and i'm actually gonna make them a little bit not straight you could do if you had straight hair you could do this and do very very straight hairpins and that would look really cool but because these are like straight hairpins but i've got waves in i'm gonna kind of balance it out a little bit by having them kind of staggered a bit like how i've done with the other hair slides in this video previously so this next one is going in i'm actually gonna start sliding it in further over than the one above it just to kind of have them kept at different starting points and i'm sliding this next one in just behind my ear and as i'm sliding i use the rest of my fingers to keep everything flat and i'm going to point this one sliding upwards i think and I kind of feel like that's enough already, but what I'm actually going to do is add one more just to the top of my hair here. You could also then add another one down here, but I like to keep volume in this area. So I don't want to like lick it all back too much using the hair clips. So I'm just going to add one more kind of up the top here. So this one's going in a kind of upwards motion. I'm going to go downwards with this one and I'm going to start it just after my hairline starts. And I don't slide these in too tightly if that makes sense so i've got a lot of wiggle room with how i move them and they don't then pull 
bits of hair and you don't get lines where the hair is being kind of like pulled into place so yeah that is it for this one really really easy very pretty i love it so much the one thing i would say is if you're struggling to kind of see the side of your head either get a mirror to the side of you and kind of like use a couple of mirrors maybe to be able to see the full way around your head which is what i've had to do in this bathroom or get someone to help you out because looking that far up can strain your eye a little bit which i think i've just done adult supervision for this hairstyle apparently is required but yeah that is going to be it from me today i really hope you guys have enjoyed this video please let me know which look was your favorite and tag me if you decide to recreate any of them and please subscribe if you're new i would love to have you back for more videos and let me know if you want more hairstyles i would love that but yeah thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you guys again soon bye